Uh, right now, let's bring things back uh, to, uh, well, debate uh, here in the UK about our, uh, our media and our handling of things and whether or not uh, uh, the BBC can really save it, well, save themselves from themselves, really, uh, the appointment of the new Director General Tim Davey. Uh, he, along with the old chairman, we're told we may even get a, a new chairman in the form of Charles Moore, former editor of the Daily Telegraph very soon. Uh, but uh, Tim Davey was speaking out in the uh, uh, questioning uh, from MPs in the House of Commons yesterday uh, about uh, the need for impartiality. And he said that he would be prepared to not just ban some BBC stars who breach impartiality rules on social media, specifically on Twitter, uh, basically saying you have to delete your Twitter account if you want to carry on on the BBC. He said he would even be prepared to sack BBC stars. But would there be anyone left in that case? Let's talk to Brendan O'Neill, who's editor of Spiked Online. Good morning to you. Hi, Julia. Good morning. Um, I mean, I think, I suppose, uh, this is encouraging, at least. I, I I, don't really care whether BBC stars give their opinions or not, as long as there is one rule for everyone. But I was certainly told at a point when I had uh, uh, interviews uh, at the BBC to go work uh, in BBC Radio, I was told, of course, you wouldn't be allowed to continue tweeting at all because of your views. And I said, what, what are my views? And it says, well, no, you couldn't give any political views in, in any tweets at all. And I said, oh, OK. But how come I see political views in tweets from BBC people all the time? The point is, it's what your views are, isn't it? That's exactly right. And, uh, you know, it's important for the BBC to be impartial. And if they're, some of their big name presenters are out there putting forward these very predictable points of view, very kind of North London, Ramona points of view, uh, that, that is breaching impartiality rules. You know, I've, I, I think that the... the Someone like Gary Lineker actually sums up the problem with the BBC at the moment, which is that he gets paid a huge wage from our money that we pay via the licence fee, and then he turns around and he sneers at people. He sneers at Brexit voters. He sneers at anyone who disagrees with him on the issue of refugees and immigration. This, the public broadcaster should not be sneering at the public. And when you have presenters doing that day in, day out, Something does have to be done about it. And this is the thing, isn't it? I, it it's sort of the, the, the BBC is so, we discovered, you know, so remain. I mean, it's, mm. it's so unremittingly remain uh, and also sort of liberal left wing. It's the only place that sort of everyone reads The Guardian uh, as one of the least selling newspapers in the country. Um, and they think that's normal. That their, their worldview is such a bubble, or such a microcosm of their little sort of isn't a dinner party world. Um, they almost don't notice politically um, unneutral, um, uh, politically biased tweets and messages and comments in the media. Um, when they support their own cause because they think their views are the neutral views. They don't realise that they're not representative of the public at large. Otherwise, um, we wouldn't have a Conservative government and we wouldn't have Brexit, Brexit happen. <laughs> That's the, that's the problem here. When they express their political views, they don't think they're expressing political views. They think they are expressing common sense, as they always hear at the dinner parties they go to or in the Guardian columns that they read or in the chats they have around the water cooler at the BBC. They think this is common sense. They think being a hardcore Remainer, hating Brexit, thinking people who voted for Brexit are stupid, they think those are neutral views, of course. They're not neutral views. They are highly ideological points of view. They are highly political points of view. And I think that's the message we've got to get across. We've got to make it clear to these people that what they're saying is very political. It's often very insulting. And the fact that the BBC became the Brexit, Brexit bashing corporation for three or four years is actually a serious problem because the public broadcaster should at least engage with and try to reflect the public rather than always turn it against them. But when you get stars like Gary Lineker, who, who has basically said, I'm going to carry on saying what I'm saying, uh, do mm -hmm. you think realistically, what is he down to, a pittance? I mean, only 1.2, 1.3 million. I don't know how he gets, I don't know why he gets out of bed for that sort of money. Who are we kidding? How does he get by? Um, is the BBC really going to sack him for a tweet about, I don't know, taking in a, a refugee or something? Well, that's the thing. Uh, Gary Lineker is obviously trying to stand up to the BBC. He's trying to stand up to the people who pay him this extraordinary amount of money. And I think the BBC and the new bosses have to face him down, right? Because that's what people will expect them to do. There's an extraordinary arrogance to people like Gary Lineker. Um, you know, th this idea that they can do whatever they like. But the, the fact of the matter is, if you work for the BBC, there are certain rules. And the, the most important rule is impartiality. We, we saw the same thing with Emily Maitlis, who actually thought she could use Newsnight 
as a platform for her political views. I'm sorry, you can't use the BBC like that. You ha the BBC is supposed to be reflective of public concerns. It's supposed to speak to the public in a neutral, impartial way. When you use the BBC as a platform to push your political views further and further, that does cross a line and something has to be done about it. It was very noticeable also, the, the, the view that seemed to come out of the BBC, the prospect of Charles Moore as the the, uh, the, the new uh, chairman, uh, someone very much the conservative on the right wing who once actually refused to pay his licence fee and got fined for it, although he said he would do anything to save the BBC, again, from mm. itself. The fact that so many people were saying, well, they'd, they'd be a mass exodus of staff, I kind of like points to the fact that this supposedly neutral building of full of people isn't neutral at all. I, uh, exactly. And I thought the response to the, the discussion about Charles Moore potentially becoming the next chairman was so revealing, because what it suggests is that there is a certain political set who think that they own public institutions. They think they own the BBC and they think the BBC should only reflect the narrow points of view that their class hold. And any suggestion that someone from outside of that world should come in, they start saying, oh, my God, it's fascism, it's a takeover. They're so used to getting their way, they're so used to having their political viewpoints uh, unquestioned that they react in this way to any other suggestion of changing things. That suggests that change is actually really necessary. Yeah, indeed. Thank you very much indeed for that. I really appreciate it.